Real quick, last year I was in an episode of World's Greatest High School, Piers Brosnan. I'd like to take this opportunity to correct a huge error that the editors did that made me look uninformed. Um, I stated that the robbers brutally cut the Rembrandts from the frame, from the stretcher bars, and that was true. But they spliced two different comments together. They, they, they had me say, and they did the same to the pride of the museum, the Vermeer. They absolutely did not cut the Vermeer, and I knew that, but the way the editors spliced it together makes me look like I said something erroneous, and that bothers me. Also, I got into the paint chips and the Billy Youngworth story, and all of the experts that tested the paint chips, they chose not to put that in, unfortunately, but I, I was told that they only had so much time. With commercials, that was an hour long, but it really was like 42 minutes long. And they didn't think, the, 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 again, they wanted mob, mob, you know, the mob had the, the auto shop, and the, but paint chips, maybe the audience would have not been so interested. But I'm going to get into it with you because it is interesting. But other than that, I love Pierce Brosnan. I'm a big fan, and I'm honored that I was in it. I thought the show was great. A while, a small amount of paint chips uh, uh, was inside an envelope that arrived addressed to Tom Mashberg at the Boston Herald. The, the sample, and it was a small amount, so who did it knew what they were doing, not to damage the painting, just enough that they can test it. And um, this is the actual photo of the paint chips. The sample was tested by a Chicago-based expert named Walter McCrone. He's the same man who tested the Shroud of Turin. And he said it was, without a doubt, unadulterated Rembrandt. It was, without a doubt, Rembrandt. The problem was, and the feds jump on the case and say, it, it's, it's not a Rembrandt, right? Problem was, Billy never said it was a Rembrandt, but, uh, but Tom Ashberg did. And Tom Ashberg actually says that he said it was probably from the Rembrandt, but never said he confirmed it was from the Rembrandt. But the feds used this and jumped on it to label Billy a con man and said he's a con man. It was missing varnishes that were, that the, the, this didn't have the varnishes that the Rembrandt had. It didn't match at all the storm on the Sea of Galilee. So it was, uh, they said the sample may have come from a 17th century Dutch master, but it wasn't from the Rembrandts. So three months later in 1998, two experts, one named Herman Kuhn, a real expert who in 1968 did tests on all kinds of Vermeers, including and pigment analysis, including the painting, the concert from the gardener. So here is an expert who is familiar with this particular painting. They said they concluded this was definitely consistent with the concert by the Vermeer. And it was too late that once they get at something, they start parroting. It's not the Rembrandt, it's not the Rembrandt. And here you have Herman Kuhn and the other experts saying, wait a minute, this is consistent with the Vermeer. So the, the feds didn't want to grant the immunity Billy was asking, and they portrayed Billy as a con man, and the, the whole uh, negotiations broke down. And that was their second blunder. But in 2003, and this is the part that they cut out on Pierce Brosnan, which is very important. In 2003, the FBI allowed an expert's expert, Dr. Hubert Van Sonnenberg, who was the head of conservation at the Met Museum. In October 8, 2003, he tested the paint chips, and um, he was the leading authority on Dutch paintings, pa painters, and Rembrandt. This is a magnified photo of what Dr. Van Sonnenberg was looking at. He examined the paint chips to determine the makeup of the paint composition. He concluded that this sample was a fingerprint match to the Vermeer. A highly expect, uh, respected expert who worked with von Sonnenberg was quoted as saying it would be almost impossible to produce a pigment sample that matched this stolen Vermeer. The mix of the pigments and chemical elements observed coupled with the layer structure of the painting make an almost fingerprint match. When the FBI finally admitted that this was consistent with the Vermeer's paint sample, it was years later, and that, and that was too late. That, that, that story gets, gets buried. You don't even hear about it. The news did play up the fact that Dr. Von Sonnenberg said he saw red lake matter present in this paint sample. This was a special red pigment that they used back then and that uh, Vermeer used that was made with insects. This red was used in this carpet down here. That's where that little paint sample, again, the guy who gave them this paint sample knew right where to go to give them something to look at, good to look at. There was much more than the cochineal red lake matter finding. 
there was something specific that led Dr. von Sonnenberg to conclude that this sample came from the Vermeer. He told John Borelli, who was the very respected director of Met Museum Security, that the chips absolutely came from a Vermeer and he firmly believed it was from that concert. So they blew it in 1997. He told Borelli there was one cross section that specifically matched. Borelli stated that when someone of Dr. Hubert von Sonnenberg's stature gives you his opinion, you can take it as gospel. This is Borelli's book, it's a really good read, stealing the show. So Dr. Hubert von Sonnenberg and other experts tested and declared in their finding that the paint chips were totally consistent with the stolen Vermeer, but the authorities and the museum admin pushed a false narrative of a hoax. 